Hi there, Tanya. I'm happy to see that you've written some essays for us. Let's get into it straight away, shall we? Okay, the first one is the English and Homestay letter. Let's see what you said. Dear Mr. Smith, hope you are in best of health. I am ready to touch base prior to my stay with your family starting next month as a part of the English and Homestay program. I am a 25-year-old Indian student who was recently awarded her master's degree in Australia. As a part of my curriculum, I had to travel extensively to understand various cultures and customs. This has elevated my interest in traveling a lot, and hence, I look forward to my personal development trip in the UK this year. Furthermore, I am, very, I am a very enthusiastic person who is well organized and tidy. Since this is my first trip to the UK. I am very excited yet scared as I am driving by myself from the airport to your address. It would be very useful if you could provide me with some basic understanding of the traffic rules as well as the best route to take to avoid the city congestion. I will be arriving on 26th February around 5 p.m. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Yours faithfully, Tanya Goodrell. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the good news first, Tanya. Um, the grammar is accurate. The vocabulary was accurate, so good. Um, accurate and, and appropriate. I mean, it was all, it was fine. It was, um, let's see. Okay. Um, as far as the grammar is concerned, I would have liked to see, since my understanding is that you need a rather high score, I would like to see a little more advanced grammar. Um, you've used some modal verbs, that's fine. Um, you did use this one sentence here, which was a conditional. That was fine, that was well done. So that's the kind of grammar I want to see. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, so maybe a little more uh, complexity in some of your grammar, a little bit, okay? Obviously it's a short writing assignment, so there's not a lot of room to have complex grammar. But um, if you can, try to just include a little more. Now, uh, some other things. Dear Mr. Smith, so you know the name of the person you're staying with, but you ended your letter yours faithfully, and that's wrong. It's supposed to be here yours sincerely. Um, you only use yours faithfully when we don't know the name of the person we are writing to. So this would absolutely um, be noticed by an examiner and could potentially affect your score. Uh, now, you don't know Mr. Smith. You've never met Mr. Smith before. Um, and so for that reason, I really would like this to be a formal letter. I would have to say that your style was a little, I don't want to say informal, but it was certainly neutral. Okay? So, um, what could you have changed? I hope you're in the best of health. Ah, not so much. Um, I'm writing touch base. Okay, this was fine. Um, okay, it just felt a little like this. I am very excited yet scared as I am driving by myself. So I don't know if you need to get into all of this uh, personal information about your emotional state, okay? Uh, I think you could have avoided that and written more about wanting to know certain things about England, about uh, the culture, about, uh, you know, maybe different pieces of information that you want. Um, and then the grammar here was wrong. You, not the grammar, it's actually the punctuation. You didn't want a comma here. So it should be, since this is my first trip to the UK, okay, um, so no comma here. Okay, now there's one last thing I want to talk about this letter here. Take a look at this. Ask the family some questions to get essential information. Let's talk about how you did that. What does some mean? It means certainly more than one. In fact, one would argue that it means more than two. You could argue that, but it does say some questions. So one question is certainly not enough. Let's see what you did. You said it would be very useful if you could provide me with some basic understanding of the traffic rules as well as the best route to take to avoid the city congestion. Okay, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. But uh, you have to really, really pay attention to those um, to those instructions. Um, like I said, I'm going to take it as being more than one, but it's possible that an examiner might expect more because it does say some. Okay, essentially, it's one question, kind of requesting 
two similar pieces of information. So just be aware of that and be a little careful. All right, on the whole, good job. Now let's take a look at your international marketing essay. Globalization has melted the borders of countries, not the countries. You're not talking about a specific group of countries. I think you mean worldwide. And free trade has enhanced economic development. International marketing is one of its byproducts, which is often debated as a boon or a bane. Let us consider a few key points for this discussion. So first of all, it should be a few, because you don't mean nearly none. You mean some. Also, take a look at the instructions. It says, discuss both sides and give your opinion. I don't see your opinion here. I just see uh, an introduction that shows you're going to discuss both sides. However, they've asked you for something specific. They've asked for your opinion. If you look at the band descriptors for task two, in band seven under, uh, under task achievement, it clearly says a clear position uh, is found throughout the essay. Throughout means from beginning to the end. And so how can you make your position clear from the beginning? By including it in the introduction. So please keep that in mind in the future. Okay, statistics show that global marketing enhances the in-house production of the country as the exports increase, okay, no S, which ultimately contributes in pumping up the gross domestic product of the company. This not only popularizes a country's product, but this practice invites the nation to take part in the international trade market, which comes with its entourage. I don't know if this is the right word here. I don't think this is what you mean. Uh, take part in the international trade market, which comes with its maybe you mean it metaphorically. Still, it's a little not so great. Uh, nation's culture, language, and traditions. It is fascinating how a product can represent so many aspects of a country. The history has spoken, not the history, history. History has spoken on numerous occasions that international marketing is a platform to share ideas and a necessity. For instance, the creation of the European Union has given birth to a single market economy, making the trade smooth, making trade, not the, making trade smooth, and despite the diversity existing in Europe, not the, there is a free flow of thoughts in different culture, cuisines. This encourages multiculturalism and so seeds to a greater future with technology and rapid advancements. Okay, lovely, but I don't really feel like you're saying very much. Okay? Um, why do I say that? International marketing is necessary and an economical form of education. It also spreads ideas, language, and cultures. Where are you discussing that? Um, let's see. So essentially, you're talking about how great international marketing is. Okay. You're saying, oh, it's fascinating how it happens. You say, um, oh, it's a necessity, but you never explain to me why. So. You say it's fascinating how a product can represent so many aspects of a country. Oh, really? Well, give me some examples. Explore it. Illustrate it. Show me what you mean. Then you say it's uh, a necessity and it's um, a platform. How? Okay. I don't really feel like, um, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about the European Union. But tell me specifically in terms of marketing, international marketing. So I feel like although your writing is lovely and abstract, um, it just doesn't really get into the heart of the question. It's like you're skirting around the issue, but never really addressing it head on. Okay. Um, so let's move on. All right, now I'm going to show you something else that's a little troublesome for me. Look at how enormous this paragraph is, okay? Uh, and then look at this one. It's only half of the previous one. I don't want you to do that. I want you to try to balance the length of your paragraphs um, as much as possible. I know that you're not going to do it line per line, but try to at least keep it relatively balanced because immediately it looks like you are um, analyzing one side of the issue far more than the other side. All right, and you don't want to do that, not if you need a seven and above. Okay, so on the contrary, sometimes this can be seen as an intrusion into a country's privacy or invasion to the resources it possesses. There are limited resources with each country, I think you mean within, within each country in the world, of the world. And if these are sold to the rest of the world, they, they diminish the possibility of future generations of that land to enjoy it. For instance, Botswana, the land which produces precious diamonds, is experiencing low supplies and doubts the reserves for the next generations. Oh, 
All right, but what does that have to do with marketing? That's international trade. So, um, I mean, you're. I don't think this is this is an appropriate example here. Um, while I was, I was interested to see how you're going to develop this. I don't think this is appropriate. Um, you're talking about the receiving country. So, for example, if the U.S. is advertising, I don't know, Coca-Cola in Botswana, how could that potentially feel like an intrusion and invasion into that country? This is what you need to address here, okay? Many economists, uh, many economists, I don't know what I'm saying, many economists suggest that a situation can either be seen as an opportunity or a threat after, and after considering both the sides of this coin, I strongly advocate the international markets have become the necessity of this world. It's marketing, not the international marketing markets themselves. It is not only economically essential, but practically vital as well to spread ideas and knowledge. Okay, if that's the case, then, Tanya, you also have to reverse your paragraphs. This is the side you don't agree with. This is the side you do agree with. So it has to come at the bottom. It has to come close to your conclusion. Okay, so um, here's the takeaway. There are some good elements of your writing. You've got a nice grasp of grammar, a nice grasp of vocabulary, some good things happening, but you uh, do have to change some things in terms of task achievement and the way you develop your topics. Um, it's not, not all is lost. I don't want you to get discouraged because you have the right elements to, to do well. But what you do need is some structure and some feedback uh, in order to help you move forward and get the score you need. Uh, for that reason, I would really like to see you looking into the online course, um, see how, um, you know, maybe you can sign up because I think that's the best route for you to really get some ideas on how to answer the topic and how to develop appropriately. Okay, uh, good luck to you. I hope to see more of your writing in the near future. Um, so I'll be looking forward to it. Good luck.